being investigated by a Senate-led group called the Pujo Committee. J.P. Morgan said, The first thing in commercial credit is character, before money or anything else. Later in his life, J.P. Morgan said, Money equals business, which equals power, all of which come from character and trust. This quote is true in that J.P. Morgan's individualistic character helped him amass a large fortune, which influenced many people on Wall Street. But it hides the fact that not everyone with character is guaranteed to make a large amount of money, like Morgan. In fact, Morgan actually prevented many people from becoming successful through his individualism. One way he would do this was by maximizing his profits to cut out the competition, which would at times be detrimental to those around him. Early in his career, J.P. Morgan sold 5,000 defective guns to the United States government for $22 when he bought them for only $350. Although they reportedly blew soldiers' thumbs off, J.P. Morgan was not charged for it. He would also pay low wages to his workers in an effort to get more profit like many other businesses at the time. Morgan's ruthless individualism showed in other ways, too. He would have private meetings on his yacht, the Corsair, or in his library, where he would haggle other businessmen and sometimes even lock the door until they would agree to a deal that would be beneficial to him. One such example was when Morgan helped save the U.S. economy during the Panic of 1907. He asked for the heads of many large banks and trusts to meet in his library in order to solve the panic, and asked them to invest in their smaller competitors to save the economy. When they refused, he locked the door on them and made them stay through the night until they finally agreed at 5 o'clock in the morning. When going through the process of organization and putting himself on the board of a company, Morgan would begin to take control and direct the company as he saw fit. It was said that the true chairman was wherever Morgan sat. In addition, Morgan donated large sums of money to William McKinley in 1896 and 1900 during his election campaigns because McKinley was a pro-corporation president. Person. As a result, Morgan's individualism allowed him to become successful and to even develop monopolies in some industries, such as steel. Ultimately, his individualism allowed him to become wealthy and powerful, but it denied success to many people and businesses. In Morgan's later life, the general public and the government began to fear him, believing that he had too much power and many efforts to curb it ensued. Morgan first ran into trouble with the government in 1902. He had just reached a compromise with financier E.H. Harriman and railroad builder James J. Hill to create Northern Securities Company, which would consolidate three very important railways in the country. Teddy Roosevelt, a then recently elected and firmly antitrust president, considered the merger a violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act, which had previously been rarely enforced. And in 1902, he ordered his Justice Department to dissolve it. In 1904, the Supreme Court officially dissolved Northern Securities. Morgan had saved the economy during the Panic of 1907, but the public was outraged at its obvious manipulation of the economy. They thought that he had too much power and could manipulate financial systems for his own gain. This led the Pujo Committee to investigate him and other wealthy bankers, although Morgan was the primary target in the investigation. The Pujo Committee discovered that Morgan controlled more than $22 billion in capital through his over 100 corporations. But surprisingly, the Pujo Committee couldn't find Morgan guilty of any illegal crimes. Not only was he able to save the entire U.S. economy and control billions of dollars in capital over many businesses, but he did this while never breaking the law. The results from the investigation helped the government realize that laws must be put into place to prevent individuals from amassing too much wealth and becoming too powerful. Shortly after the investigation, the Federal Trade Commission Act and Clayton Act were officially published, which are two of the three major antitrust laws used today. In the end, his individualism created a legend. <clears throat> oh, indeed a powerful one. It showed any ambitious youth that there lay a secret path to economic success. It was being ruthless, being a leader without empathy, with profit as the sole goal. Morgan's story extended the social Darwinist rhetoric of the era, proving concretely to many people that the American dream was possible, achievable, fathomable, but only through ruthless leadership 
and just one thing front and center, the individual.